technology is a force that has changed the world in decades, and if not in century. And as we move forward in time, technology becomes more powerful and influential than ever. There is a great deal of debate about when technology was first developed. Some argue it began with the invention of the wheel, while others claim it was not until industrial revolution, until 19th century, when we saw technological advancement making their mark into a printing press, telephone, internet in a more recent history. Talking about telephone, well, telephone was invented in the year 1876, and the common man in India came to know about it, and the widespread installation of telephone in Indian household began in 1990. In contrast, mobile phone became more accessible to general population in early 2000. So it took a century from invention of telephone and for it to be widely used, and from wired communication to wireless communication, it just took 10 years. And these days, it is so convenient for us to do a video call to our family and friend, irrespective of which place they are in the world. That was not the case back in 1990. Now, this trend highlights the rapid evolution of technology and its profound impact on society, reshaping the way we communicate, work, and interact with the world around us. Now, in the vast landscape of technology, artificial intelligence emerges as a beacon of innovation and transformation. AI transforms industry, reshapes the human capabilities, and challenges the boundaries of what we thought was possible. And in the broader uh, field of artificial intelligence, um, traditional AI and generative AI are considered to be uh, the types of artificial intelligence. Traditional AI involves creating algorithms that follows predefined uh, rules and logics. They process data and make decisions. Now, a generative AI is a fun bit. So here we are creating a content that computer program might not have seen it before, not necessary. Well, it could have seen parts of it, and it is able to synthesize it and come up with a new thing. Now, this new thing or the end product or end result, well, it could be, um, well, it could be an audio or video. It could be an image or computer program. It could be in a form of a text, an essay or uh, email. And, uh, in my talk, I'm going to well, reflect more on the generative AI. And to be frank, generative AI is not a new concept. It has been around us for a while. We all are familiar with Google Translate. Google Translate was launched in the year 2006, 18 years ago. So you uh, enter or put some language in some text in one language, it will translate into the other language. And Google Translate had served us really well. In fact, it served me really well, the reason being, for my masters, I had to relocate to a place called Coimbatore, and the spoken language there was Tamil. And uh, it, it was with the help of Google Translate only, I used to interact with the local community there. Uh, with the help of Google Translate, I used to ask them, that is there any Punjabi dhavas nearby? Or uh, I used to ask them, uh, the nearest, is, which direction is the nearest metro station? Or uh, is there any uh, a tourist destination nearby where I can go and come back in two days? And another example of uh, generative AI is Siri. Now, Siri was first launched as an independent application back in 2010, uh, 14 years ago. And it was sensation back then. You ask Siri to set alarm. You can ask Siri to call someone from your contact. And Siri talks back. Amazing. So what I'm trying to tell you is generative AI is not new. So the question is, what is this fuzz? What happened? So in 2023, a company called OpenAI uh, in California, in San Francisco, they launched or they announced GPT-4. And it claimed that it can beat 90% of humans on SAT. Now, those who do not know SAT, SAT is a standardized test that American school children takes to enter university. It is just like, uh, like an admission test. I mean, there's a uh, multiple choice of questions, and it is considered to be not easy. And GPT models claim that it can uh, do it. The GPT models also claim, and they have shown us that they can solve other things too. Now, for example, if we ask it, 
I'm writing an essay about the use of mobile phones during driving. Can you give me three arguments in favor? Now, this is quite sophisticated. If you ask me, I cannot come with three arguments. But in fraction of a second, it will generate three arguments for you. If you put a prompt that I act as a JavaScript developer, write a program that check the information on form, name and emails are required, but address and age are not, it will generate the computer program for you. So we have moved from Google Translate and Siri to something that is a little more advanced and uh, well sophisticated. This graph shows the time ChatGPT took to reach 100 million users as compared to the other uh, tools which was launched previously. Our beloved Google Translate took 78 months to reach 100 million users. Instagram took 30 months, and ChatGPT reached 100 million users uh, within two months. And there are many other generative AI tools or interface available online. And there are so many of us are using it on a daily basis. Some are just referring to them, and some are dependent on these generative AI interface. So the question comes in my mind that are these generative AIs always right? Are they fair? Let's check out. So Google announced BARD their version of uh, AI, generative AI program, back in March 2023. And to promote uh, their AI program, they posted a GIF on a social media platform, which shows Bard answering questions about NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's new discovery. And in the post, there is a prompt, in the, in the promotional post, there is a prompt that what new discoveries from the James Webb Telescope's uh, can I tell my nine-year-old nine about? and it has generated three arguments. The third one, particularly if you see, it says JWST took the very first picture of planet outside of our solar system, and these distant worlds are called exoplanets. Then comes an astrophysicist, a serious guy, and he responded, well, I'm sorry, I'm sure Bard will be impressive, but for the record, JWST did not take the very first image of solar planet outside our solar system. These were taken by so-and-so people in the year 2004. Now, this error wiped $100 billion of Google's parent company platform. Me, along with uh, five of my other colleagues, we tested the other uh, generative AI platforms available online. I mean, to one such, we asked a question that, is the UK monarchy? It responded, yes, the United Kingdom is a constitutional monarch. Currently, Queen Elizabeth II, as of my last update, is a monarch. It does not know King Charles is a monarch now. We asked it, who is Rishi Sunak? It responded, as of my last update in January 2022, Rishi Sunak is a British politician, and he served as Chancellor of Exchequer. It does not know Rishi Sunak is a prime minister. I asked it to tell me a joke on men. Well, it responded, why did the man put his money in the blender? because he wanted to make liquid acids. And when I asked it to tell me a joke about women, but it denied to comply with my request. So I had a follow-up question to it, why? And it responded that as an AI, I adhere to strict ethical guidelines and that prohibit me from generating or promoting content that could be considered offensive towards a group of people, including women. Now, with these examples, what I'm trying to tell you or make point that is that it is impossible to regulate the content that AI programs are exposed to. And there's always going to be historical biases. And there will be few occasions where it will exhibit favorable or uh, unfavorable behavior. Now, what you see on screen is a soccer match at Google's DeepMind and looks like fun. But here's the thing. The engineers at DeepMind did not program these robots to play. The engineers used motion capture technology to teach these AI programs how to move like humans. And the only command that was given to these robots were to score. Now, with this self-learning program and the practice, they got better and better. And they learned this game by themselves, coming up with different strategies, different way to walk, different way to block, scoring over and over again. These are 
the kind of you know experiment or the research you know through which you will see or you will find robots coming out of factories and they will be working in few of the human environment uh, like mining dangerous construction sites uh, exploration and uh, disaster recoveries now another uh, like i would like to uh, mention one more like one of the greatest achievement of this company google deepmind that proteins are considered to be the fundamental components of all living organism including humans and uh, the 3d mapping of one protein structure it takes 5 phd years experimentally so google came with one uh, ai interface well uh, it it i mean took them uh, to make 5 years and once complete it predicted 200 million protein structures in matter of seconds that are known to science and once they predicted i mean these protein structures of 200 million they uh, like publicized them I in this database a gift to humanity and this protein database was used well to develop malaria vaccines and it was used to develop enzymes that can eat plastic waste and also develop uh, new antibiotics so i would like to conclude this uh, talk of mine by saying that since 1945 uh, the world knew that nuclear programs uh, could possibly uh, like destroy human civilization and we also knew it can benefit human civilization by providing inexpensive and plentiful energy then we all came together through international forums and we ensure that nuclear programs uh, will be used primarily for good so it is time that we all should regroup and come together and ensure that ai does not annihilate our mental and uh, social world thank you